Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build Pong using Python and a library called Pygame. And if you are not really interested in game development, you should still check out this video because there's a lot of cool Python topics that I'm going to cover if you're not really familiar with how to use Python. So with that being said, if you are new to my channel and you have not subscribed yet, be sure to click that subscribe button and the bell icon to get some notifications because coming up, I'm going to be publishing a lot of videos about web development, software engineering, and just different tutorials in general, which will help you out in your programming endeavors. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. So as you can see here, I have a Python Pong folder that I'm kind of opened in VS Code in. And before I get started to code, I need to set up a virtual environment with Python. So I'm going to say Python 3 hyphen M V N V space E N V. And that's going to create a folder called E N V, which basically contains a self isolated Python setup, which when I install dependencies such as Pygame, it doesn't affect my system. So now that that is done, what I can do is I could simply set my, um, or I could source, there's a, there are bin folder inside ENV, so bin activate. And when I source that, basically it allows me to use that environment when I do pip. So I'm going to say pip install pygame. And I'm going to give it a specific version because I was running into issues with my Catalina and Mac setup. So after running this, it basically installed that Python dependency inside this ENV folder, and now we can use it inside of our code. The last step, since I'm using VS Code, um, actually that's already set up. I was gonna say I need to go in here and select my folder here, but that is already selected here. If you do Command Shift P, you say Python, select interpreter, that'll load up this drop down where you can select that ENV folder we just created. Okay, so at this point we are good to go. Let's just go ahead and try to start writing our Pong game. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna add a git ignore to ignore that env folder and also the VS code folder so that these don't get committed to my GitHub. But that's not that important. What we're gonna do now is create a main.py file. And this file is where we're gonna have the main entry point to our game. So in order to set up a game using Pygame, you first need to import the Pygame library. And there's also a couple of other things we need to do. So I'm gonna import a, um, a bunch of locals. These are just like constants that you can use from Pygame. Using Pygame, what you can do first is you can set up a window in a screen and that's what we're gonna to try to do. So let's just go ahead and make some constants. So I'm gonna say screen width is equal to 640 and screen height is 480. So I have two variables that we're gonna be using for determining that window. And then what we want to do is init a pygame. So we can do pygame.init. That just sets up pygame to you know, be able to start running. And then we want to set up a pygame screen. So what we can do is pygame.display.setMode. And then we pass that a screen width and a screen height. So line 8 is basically setting up a window of that width and height. And then we can use that screen object to kind of render things to the screen. But before we can actually start doing that, there's a couple of other things we need to set up. So first of all, we need to set up a clock. And this is used for telling the game how quick it should actually update. So like if you've played any games, you have like 50 frames per second, 60 frames per second. You can set how often this is updating. And we will update that to 30 in just a second. So we also want to declare a variable to know when our game is like done and we should exit out of this window. So I'm going to say done false. And I want to keep looping while done is not set. Right? And like I talked about the clock, inside this while loop, we can actually use that clock and say clock tick and pass it a 30 for how often this game will update. In fact, I'll go up here and say tick rate is equal to 30 to kind of bring that constant up. And then finally at the end, I could say pygame quit. And this just exits the, the pygame window correctly after my while loop is done. So a quick recap before we keep going, we imported pygame, we set up some constants, we set the screen width and height. We have this internal clock that we can you know, specify a tick rate. Now we wanna kind of just draw something to the screen. So what we can do here is we could just say um, screen.fill and then pass it a color. I'll just pass it whatever color that is. I think that's white. And then I could say pygame.draw or display.flip. And what this will do is basically make the screen white. And then as you draw, you're kind of drawing on a back buffer. And then once you're done drawing on that buffer, you kind of switch over 
so there's no like flashing or tearing going on when your game is rendering. So the last thing that we need to do before we can run this is we actually need to listen to some of the events in Pygame or else your window won't load. So what we can do is after we do the clock dot tick, we could simply do a for loop and say for event in pygame.event.get. And then inside that loop, we basically want to check if we've tried to do a quit event, right? And if someone tried to click on the X exit button of the window, we want to, you know, break out of this loop. So we can say done is equal to true. So at this point, assuming everything is set up correctly, what we should be able to do, I also added this just to add a title to our window. We should be able to click this play button and that should load up a window where we can draw our game. Cool, so that all worked out and now we can move on to the next steps, which is going to be try to draw a ball in the center of the screen. So in order to draw a ball, there is a method you can do um, and it's called pygame.draw.circle and then you can pass it a couple of things, right? The first thing you need to pass it is the screen that you're trying to draw to and then you can pass it a color, which I'm gonna go up here and just declare one called a red. So I'll say red, green, and blue. Just go ahead and pull white up here too. We got red and white. Like the fill could be white now. So we pass circle, the screen, a color, a location. So in this case, I'll just say screen width divided by two and screen height divided by two. And then finally pass it a radius. And if you don't know what this stuff is, basically it's division, but it's integer division. So if this is like ends up being a decimal, it just casts it to an end just to keep it a whole number. So at this point, we should be able to stop and rerun our Python game, and we should see a red, actually we got a syntax error, so let's fix that real quick. I think I have an extra parenthesis over here, so let's get rid of that, rerun this, and now we have a red ball in the center of the screen. So it's a little bit of work to set this all up, um, but once you get it going, I mean, you'd have a, a project you can just copy and paste this main game loop, but there wasn't really that much code to kind of, you know, get a window open, get something drawn to the screen and to draw a red circle. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is we want to make that ball, the circle bounce around the screen. So let's first of all, I'm going to go ahead and just make a new ball file, which can kind of be a class that contains all of our ball logic. So I'm going to say class ball, oops, class ball. And that is going to have a couple of things. So the first thing it's going to have is going to be a constructor. And inside the constructor, we want to make sure we set a couple of things. So self x is equal to um, screen width divided by two. Self of y is screen height divided by two. And then we could do a velocity. So self of vy is equal to one. Self of v, or sorry, vx is equal to one and vy is equal to one. And then let's just go ahead and put the radius in this so that everything is kind of uh, can contained inside this ball object instead of being everywhere else. Now, in order to get this to work, we want to import um, screen width and screen height because those are constants inside of this main file. So one thing I'm going to also do is I'm going to just say constants, oops, constants dot py. And I'm going to pull out some of these constants so that we can use them in other files. And I believe we'd probably want to use the screen width and height and the colors here. So I'll just go ahead and pull those out as constants and put them in this file. And now that those are in a different file, we need to import them. So I'm going to say from constants, import star, and that's going to bring in all of those variables that we declared. And we can do the same thing over in this ball file. So I'm going to say from constants import star just to bring in all of those constants. In this case, we just need screen width and screen height. So if you just wanted to pull in screen width and screen height, you could do that here and then also pull in red because we'll need that. So we have a constructor and now we want to construct the ball instead of doing what we we're doing before. So what I could do is I need to also import that ball. So from ball import that ball class. And I'm going to go ahead and just declare a new ball. And this is how you call your constructor. You just do ball and call it like a function. So now we have a ball object that has an XY, VX, VY, and a radius. And what we could do is just use that ball object when we're drawing here. 
In fact, instead of drawing here, we should probably move this draw method to that ball class, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is say ball.draw and pretend there is a draw method, and I'm going to pass it screen. And instead of using that draw logic there, I'm going to go ahead and move over to this class. I'm going to say def draw of self and pass it that. And notice that we're trying to call uh, pygame here, so I need to also import pygame. So we're drawing a circle to the screen, which I forgot to enable as an argument here. So we need to pass screen in, screen width, and screen height. We don't actually need any more because we have the x and y. And then self.radius here instead of 10. So now our code is a little bit cleaner than it was before, and it's easier to follow. And if we don't have any syntax errors, we should be able to run this and have that same ball draw to the center of the screen. Good deal. All right, we're making some progress. So the next step is I want to make this ball move around as it updates, right? So I, it, it starts off at an initial velocity of 1 and 1, which means it's going to move bottom and to the right. And we want to make a method that we can call just to have that ball update. So I'm going to say def update. And then inside this update function, what we could do is just increment the value of x and y by the velocity. Okay. So in order to have this ball move, we need to make sure we call this update function every time we, this game does a tick event. So typically I do ball.draw and then I can say ball.update. And now if we run this, the ball should move to the bottom right at a certain speed. So you notice here it's moving super slow. So let's go ahead and increment by a faster value. So I could say self ball speed. In fact, I'll just say speed is equal to five. Um, I'll put that up here. Then I can self speed for Vx and Vy. So this should make the ball move a little bit quicker. Cool. So every tick, it's moving by five pixels. And the reason this is still so slow is because I accidentally moved this tick rate to one which is a no-no, so we need to make that 1 go to a 30, rerun our game, and notice that it moves a lot faster. So one thing you notice is that the ball went completely off the screen, which is not what we want. We actually want the ball to kind of bounce around the screen. So if I go back to my ball class, inside this update method, what we could do is add some logic to just say, if we're out of bounds, so like we know what the screen width and the height is, if the ball becomes out of bounds, we just switch the velocity so it bounces a different direction. So I'm going to say if self of x is greater than screen height minus, I'll do minus, um, let's say self.radius, then what we want to do is just set the velocity in the y direction reversed. And actually it's so supposed to be if y is greater than screen height. So if the ball gets to the very bottom of the screen minus a little bit of radius, we want to just simply bounce the ball back up. And in fact, you might want to do radius times 2 um, because radius is going to be half of the circle, half of the ball, and in fact we want the entire ball if it gets close to the bottom to go back up. So let's run this and see what happens when it hits the bottom of the screen. In fact, let me run the main file here. Cool, so if you saw that, it bounced back up and now it's going off the screen to the right. So same thing we need to do is if the ball gets to the very um, right of the screen, obviously the game's going to end. But for right now, let's just increment or implement the logic to just bounce it back to the left. And we're going to change this later on. But same idea, if the x direction goes close enough to the edge of the screen, we just want to reverse the vx. So I'll run this main.py file. And notice that it bounced off those two walls. Now we just need to cover these left two walls, which we haven't done yet. So let's go back to the ball class and just do the same logic. If self of x is less than self radius times 2, then what we want to do is bounce it back in the other direction. And then if self of y 
is less than self dot radius times two. Then we want to bounce that back in the y direction. So at this point, we have a ball that bounces around the screen and it bounces off of the four corners here. So we, I think we made some progress here. We need to add some logic to kind of end the game if it hits the left or the right of the screen. But for the most part, I think we accomplished the ball. Let's move on to the next step, which is the paddles. So for working on the paddles, let's just go ahead and do the same thing. I'll, I'll make a file called paddle. And inside of this file, I will make a class which has a constructor. Um, def init self like this. And again, this will take, um, this will set up a rectangle. We're just going to use a rectangle object, which is provided by Pygame. So in say Pygame, what you could do is you could say self rect is equal to Pygame, which has a function called rect on it, that you can pass it in x, y, width, and height. And in this case, let's just start the paddles off at the center of the screen minus the height of the paddle. So I'm going to say, let me just make this a constant up here. I'll say paddle height is 100. So I'll do paddle height divided by 2. And this is the x, the y, and then the paddle width is going to be 20. And then paddle height. I'm going to do this paddle width is 20. So that will make a pi game rectangle, which we're going to be using for collision and other things in the future. But we need to remember to import pi game up here, or we won't be able to call that function that we just tried to call. Now, similar to the circle that we worked on or the ball that we worked on, we want to make this paddle have a draw method, which takes in self in a screen. And what we can do in this draw method is do pygame.draw.rect. And then we're going to pass it the screen. We can pass it a color. So in this case, let's just make them blue, which we haven't made yet. So we'll make that in just a second. And then we want to give it a rectangle, which will be self.rect because we just created that here. So before we forget, let's make another color called blue. So we'll say blue, red, green. Blue would be the last one. So I added a blue color to our constants, and we need to make sure we import that. So from constants, import blue, screen width, and screen height. So that will make the paddle available to us to create with a constructor. And now we need to actually make the left paddle. So similar to how we did it with the ball, I'm going to go ahead and make a left paddle equals paddle. And that will hopefully create a paddle that we can draw on the left side of the screen. So down here, I'll just say paddle.draw. I'll pass it screen. And at this point, we should be able to run this and it should draw a green or sorry, a blue rectangle. And it did. So we're making some progress. The next next step I kind of want to do is it would be nice if we could have the paddle move up and down if the player used the input. In fact, actually, let's first draw the rectangle over here because there needs to be two paddles. So let's not, not get too ahead of ourselves. So we could do right paddle is equal to a new paddle object. And the only difference with this one is I need to set the x direction or the x position to be the screen height minus the actual width of the rectangle. So I'm going to say right paddle.rect.width. So that should put a paddle to the right of the screen. And again, we can come down here and just draw it and pass it that screen object. Run that again. Whoa. Screen width. Did the wrong thing there. All right, so we have two paddles on the screen now. And the next step is I just want to be able to move it up and down based on input from the user. So again, I'm just going to make a new class here called input.py. And inside this input file, what we're going to do is import pygame. And we also want to import some locals. So there's a couple of things that we need to be able to know what button was pressed. And I'm going to make a function called def handle input, which is basically handle like if the player pressed something on the input. And that's going to take in uh, the left paddle and the right paddle. 
what we can do is check if the Pygame event, so th this is something you have to call to be able to get your events, to kind of prime, prime Pygame to be able to return those events. But what we want to do is get all the keys that were pressed, right? So we can say pygame.key.get pressed. And what we can do is check if a certain key was down. So keys of key W. We want to move the left paddle up. We haven't implemented move up yet, and we will in just a second. And we can go over here and say if keys of key S is down, we can say right paddle move down. So first of all, let's just go ahead and bring in this thing inside our main. So I'm going to say from input, import that function. I think input is actually a reserved word. So let me rename this to inputs. So we're going to bring in that function. And what we want to do is call that every time up here. So I'm going to say handle inputs, left paddle, right paddle like those, like we defined in the definition. And then what we want to do is in the paddle, we pretended like we had a move up and a move down method. So it makes sense if we implement that now. So move up is going to simply just move the paddle up. So I can say self rect y minus equals self dot speed. And we don't have speed yet. So I'm going to say self speed is equal to, I'll do 10. And then move down will be basically the opposite of that. So move down is going to be a plus equal in that speed of the y direction. And I think that's all we need to do. So if everything works out correctly, we should be able to play this. And if I press W and S on my keyboard, the paddle should move left and right. We do have a syntax error. So let's go to inputs and try to figure out what's going on here. It says that else is probably needs to be an else if, right? So let's change that to an else if. Try running our main again and see what happens. Uh oh. So I totally screwed that up. I think I'm calling right paddle move down for whatever reason. Um, well, while we're here, let's just go ahead and do the logic for the right paddle, right? So what we want to do is if you press the up arrow on your keyboard, we're going to move the right paddle. And if you press down on your keyboard, we will move the right paddle down. So try it again, run my game, pressing S, pressing W, pressing down, I'm pressing up. So now we can play with both hands and we have the ability to at the same time move the paddles. So we're almost almost done here. We basically just need the ball to in the game, if you get past the left or right of the screen, and then we also want the ball to bounce off the paddle if it collides with the paddle. So let's move on to doing that logic right now. So that logic, I think, makes sense to live inside that ball file or the ball class. So what we could do is while we're updating, basically check if we've collided with the left or right paddle then we want to kind of bounce off in the opposite direction. So the thing that we had here, if we're greater than the screen width, we should probably actually in game. And if we are off here, we should probably also in game, but we're not going to do that just yet. So like I said, we need to check if we're intersecting with the left or right paddle. But unfortunately, we don't have access to the left or the right paddle here. So let's just assume that we could pass that in. And there's 101 different ways to do this, um, get access to these paddles. But this is the approach that we're going to try to take right here. So since we added that to the ball update, we just need to make sure that we pass in left paddle here and right paddle here. And now we have access to the paddles themselves. So what we could say is if the ball is intersecting with the paddles, then we bounce in the opposite direction. But unfortunately, we don't really have a way to know the hitbox of the ball. So we're going to add another helper function to this ball class called get rect. 
and we're going to be using that to return a pi game rectangle. So I'm going to say return pi game rect, and that is going to take self x minus self of radius, self y minus self of radius. You know what? It's just going to do self x, self y. And then the width would be self radius times 2. And then the height would be self radius times 2 as well. So hopefully this is correct. But now we can use this get rect function down here and just compare. So I can say if self get rect, and then there's a helper function on this rectangle object. Remember, this is a pi game rectangle. So what you can do is call a collide rect, and then you pass it the other rectangle you want to check with. So remember, left paddle has a rect property on it. And if that is colliding, we could just reverse the x direction. And then same thing with the right paddle. If the right paddle is colliding with the ball, we reverse the x direction. This is going in one way the x direction, then we reverse it. So let's see what happens if we run this, see if we have any syntax errors. The one thing I just noticed is that the paddles can go completely off the screen, which is definitely not what we want. So we probably want to come back and kind of prevent the paddles from going off the screen. So let's just work on that real quick. And to do that, let's go to our paddle um, function, our paddle class. And whenever we call move up and move down, we want to just make sure that we're not going off the screen. So I'm going to add another function that we can use for an internal helper function. And I'm going to say keep in bounds, pass that um, self. But what this does is basically if the y went out of bounds, we just min we keep the min or max. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So basically rect of y is going to be equal to the min of self rect y or the screen height minus self rect height. And this is going to prevent it from going off the bottom of the screen. And the other approach, let me just run that just to verify that I did that correctly. You know what, I did not call them yet. So we made the helper function, but we totally forgot to call it. So I'm going to say self keep in bounds and call that. And this is an internal helper function that should keep our ball inside of the screen. I'm sorry, keep the paddles inside of the screen. So let me rerun that again and see that they don't go off. All right, so they stop when we get to the bottom, which is awesome. And we want to also make sure they can't go off the top of the screen. So I'm going to say self rect y equals max of 0. I believe that's how you do it. Just make sure it doesn't go off the top of the screen by keeping either 0, and you don't want any negative numbers. So let's run that and make sure we can't go off the top of the screen. And we are. All right, so we are almost done with this game. There's probably a bug or two, but I don't want to use up all your time making this game. But the last step is we want to kind of end the game if the ball goes off of the screen. So again, we did make some comments about ending the game. So that logic is already set up. But what we want to do is basically set a Boolean that's passed in to false. Um, so let's see. I'm going to pass an end here. And if we go off the screen, I'm going to say end of zero is equal to false. Or sorry, true. In fact, I think it's called done. So done. Remember that done we used for the while loop? So we're going to pretend that we're going to pass done in for update. And inside ball.update, let's just pass in done. And the only issue with doing that is we're passing an object by value here because this is a Boolean. So when we try to do done of true, we need to make sure that we wrap it in a container. So I'm going to just change this to be an array of one value. And we're going to just do this. 
to be able to easily set that as we pass it in. So now what's going to happen is if the ball goes off the screen, the game should just exit. Uh, let's see. Takes two arguments, but three were given. Ball. I pass it to the wrong thing. It's not the draw. I need update. All right, so let's try that again. So if the ball goes off the screen. I think I did the wrong one. Yeah, I did the wrong one. Whoops. Sorry, y'all. Let me just undo all this. Okay, so these are the two I want to change, not this one. So if I go here and let me just set this, so I can say done of zero is equal to true. We're going to take in done here. And we are going to do done of zero is equal to true. And that should do it. Passing it done here. Let's try that again, right? And boom, game ends. Now that's not the best in screen. You could probably try to add some additional logic to like display some text, but this tutorial is already gone longer than I wanted it to. And it is like 1.30 or 1.44 or at in the morning. So I'm gonna wrap this tutorial up. So hopefully all the stuff I covered was pretty straightforward. Um, there's some new stuff you have to learn with Pygame and a lot of, you know, read through the documentation if you need a more clear examples of how stuff is done and all the different helper functions you have. But for the most part, this is how you build Pong in Python. Feel free to add upon this, you know, if you're really feeling of interest, clone this project down, add in an end screen, add in some like cool features to like make the ball go faster if it hits a paddle or make the ball change in directions randomly. But that wraps up this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, if you have any feedback, be sure to leave in a comment below. Otherwise, be sure to subscribe and like. And like always, happy coding, y'all.